So what's the point? You just the like to wear them? The point is I wear it when I'm working so that if I start getting distracted on something I'm not supposed to be doing. Oh, you, you like spank that, yourself? And then get back into <laughs> it. <laughs> it's more of a little snap, not a spank. Snap. It's a little snap. We'll snap back into action. We'll snap oh my into God, reality. that is amazing. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 91 of The Real Word. Word is up. We've got two really good rackets. We're going to be talking, and a marketeer. The marketeer, by the way, is Zillow 2.0. In Zillow's words, I've got notes from a private discussion that I'm going to make public. Private. Um, of what Zillow 2.0 means. We've got a compass racket. Mm hmm and we've got how to price your property racket, all mm -hmm. your listings. There's a new way to price them. The old way, the nines, is maybe not the right way anymore. Wow, but before like we do that. Full disclosure, we were like, yeah, I don't like any of those. I'm off. Like, you just, bye, guys. Before, Have a great day. No, they got to stay for the goods. <laughs> all right, so before we do that, we've got a new racket to add to the collection. It's actually called Real Tennis, which is extremely appropriate for the real word. This is what the British call. Real tennis or royal tennis, we only do the realest of real sh here on The Real Word. If you're new to the show, we wow. talk about what could or could not be BS in the real estate uh, market. We call those rackets. So we keep it real based on our opinions. Our opinions. And a, and a quick shout out to David Enstone, William Ravis, Rhode Island who gave us this tenant ra racket yes, from the National Tennis Club, which opened in 1880 we're really gaining, in Newport, Rhode Island. We're really gaining some speed. We got a new racket last week, which is behind me. And now we've got this new one. Um, I'm not allowed to spray paint it orange, so you're just going to have to deal with the fact that it's like... No, unless David gives me permission, we cannot paint that I'm orange. Okay with it. All right, I'm okay with it. it's got a little slant on it. It's a, it's, it's pretty cool. To. If I mean, you, it's, the slant is appropriate behind you. If you YouTube real tennis in Newport, you'll see this game is played inside. It's uniquely different than the tennis that we know. It's happening though. It's happening. We're getting more rackets. Send us your rackets. I mean, it's 91 episodes late. 91, right? 91. This. We week, need 91. rackets in in this studio in our Guilford studio. We need tons of rackets. Tons probably. Of rackets. You know, another couple hundred. So, if you have like more. a hookup with, like, who would that come from? Like, who makes tennis? Oh, like Spalding. If you have a, if anyone knows, all anybody right, let's that get works let's get Spalding. into our actual real estate rackets, though. Okay. Here, uh, number one, there are new rules for pricing your properties. They should be done in increments of ten thousand dollars. What is up with this? Well, what's interesting though here is that obviously price reductions historically have always been in increments of ten thousand dollars just the wrong ten thousand dollars is what they're saying the nines are no longer if, are no longer working if which, anybody can second me on this i listened i don't think i read it. i think i listened to zillow talk the book i may just order a copy so i can flip through and highlight some stuff in zillow talk they did a whole bunch of research is that, and is data. That, is that the name of the That's book? That's the name is? of the book, Zillow, Zillow Talk, Talk, yeah. Okay. And I know they talked about the eights. Like if you are in an Asian community and you, you list property using eights, there was an increase, I think maybe as much as one and a half percent. Hmm. But I know for sure they talked about properties ending in nine mm -hmm. had, I believe, and anybody that read the book can second me on this, it was a 1.25% increase on sales prices for properties that were listed ending in a nine, whether that was four forty nine zero 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 yes. or four four nine nine zero oh, zero. Oh, see, I thought because you and I have had this discussion a while back. They said either way, as long as it's a clean nine, not nine nine nine, right? But a nine, and then either three zeros or two zeros, however you make that play. Okay. That those were selling as much as one point two five percent more than comparable properties not ending in a nine. Interesting. Now. Because I so thought that it was, I thought that what your argument was, because it's funny, because when I am pricing my homes, I do remember you mentioning that, but I always thought that it was 849 not 849 So I've actually started listing my properties at 849 instead of 9 Yes, because yeah. I thought that that's what the stat was the, from. Uh, the way I read it was as long as it ended in a 9, whether it was the 849 or 849 Now, mm -hmm. uh, it also made a lot of sense for the... Um, 
I'm sorry, I had a call there and interrupted the whole flow. I mean, uh, slap yourself. I know. Oh, I can do that. That, that was bad. Though that was on, <laughs> uh, out of my control there. <laughs> um, but here's the other thing: the search criteria used to go up to. Remember how it used to search up to right. 450, up to 500, and so putting it right at 449.9 made a lot of sense. I actually just said to Yola, because we're going through this. We Yola's were, we were having our, discussions our about this. I said, that property- uh, That we're reducing. You know, lime, yeah, just go 450. I want to I want to try this out. Because what's end up, what does end up happening is that you're losing the people that are then starting at that 450 mark. So you could really win people that are going from four to 450 and then 450 to five, where if you're at 349, you're not even gonna be in the search realm at 449. For anybody that's 350 to say 425. At 349.9, you, they will not see your property which eliminates there's a bunch of buyers in any given market above 350 now especially at the 450 mark i feel like that's like now i i still think there's a lot of value to going to say 9.99 if you know there hasn't been a sale in the last 12 months over a million it well, would be crazy right. for somebody to come into that's your market that's where it gets a little scary i mean we talked about that too yep. like there's just certain numbers in the front that just need to stay like you, you may have a million dollar property in terms of what you've put into it in terms of what it means to you but if in your community in the last 12 months nobody's broken the million dollar barrier but people feel comfortable going up to 925 950 well listing it over a million and, and not going to say 990 to entice uh, offers would probably not benefit you because there's no who in that Maybe. community would be looking a million and up at that no, point. No, but you never know because I ha I mean I've got buyers right now. They're like, we'll look up to a million. Up to a million, which would mean nine ninety nine well, anywhere in the true, oh, but you would get. But the I would still get the people that are looking at a million to a million too. Like, hey Nicole, you know I'm good at a million to a million too. And then you just for 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 one hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, right. you're missing out. Again, I'm curious to see what people think because there is still part of you know that internal sort of just because you were always raised to think that three ninety nine was cheaper than four dollars, right? I mean, it's just it's a brain thing. I mean, obviously, it's been proven There's also, time and time again. But again, now that we're talking about search ranges. We're not taking, okay, the search ranges and the way, and this is an Inman article from Bernice Ross. Bernice, we love your work. Uh, we'll link this up as always in YouTube so you can check it out. But this does not take into account the strategy and the, I think what you were alluding to a little bit with just the way people think, right? right. Just think about all of the grocery stores, Target, Walmart, Nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. twenty one ninety nine. Like, there's something too. They've done For enough sure. research on that number nine that it plays a mental part of decision making in terms of receiving value. Mm -hmm. So, th the search criteria and the argument Bernice made doesn't take that into account right. at all. No, no. Human but, behavior. But again, it's it's something very interesting to think about. I guess maybe where in my mind it almost makes more sense is maybe on your drop. So if like so, I was just telling you that you know I just actually talked to a seller into doing four hundred instead of three ninety nine because of this article. I thought that it was very interesting. But in my mind, I'm concerned because I don't think it's a four hundred thousand dollar house. It's definitely like. Again, it's in the threes. Yes. So, but so maybe it does make sense to start the three ninety nine. But then when you're doing your drops, they're they're two three seventy five. They're two three fifty instead of that three forty nine number or that three seventy four yep. nine number. Um, so it's interesting. We I guess we just have to figure out strategy and what people are. Maybe Here's the other most. reason I think, you know, the the clean number makes a lot of sense. Say let's use four fifty. Say you're going to list at four fifty and you think you're pretty much priced appropriately, but say in four weeks, three weeks, whatever, you want a little bit uh, of juice added to the listing. You now can just reduce $1,000, go to 449, have a reduction, have some type of an impact. I know it's gonna be more just notifications into people's right. emails right. and on properties yeah. that they've saved and, and MLS emails and yeah. all of that. But you, as opposed to going 449 out of the gates, you now have that one reduction in your back pocket yeah. to create some notifications see i would be a lot less apprehensive about listing at 450 instead of 449 than i would be at listing something at 400 instead of 399 but I'm to your point you do miss out on 
everybody you looking do. from four to so four seventy five. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I would confidently tell a seller to go at four fifty. That does not going at four forty nine nine. In my mind, you're still in the fours, right? Like, there's a four in the front. You're looking for a four hundred thousand dollar sale. Like, you know, like and you the, know, and the percentage but, like, when of you're people talking about flipping between three ninety nine and four hundred. That's where I get a little. I mean, it again, searching yeah. makes sense, but again, back to human behavior at the three ninety nine. That's a whole nother element, but on the yes. search, criteria, search criteria, the alone. people that are starting their searches at just 450 and aren't looking at 400 and above, I, I would say that that's a limited amount of buyers that are like, I'm starting my search at 450. Well, I'm starting at 475. What's interesting, Percentage, yes, but a limited. What's interesting, though, too, is that I'm certain that those buyers, though, that are now looking at this 450 house because they're looking at a five hundred thousand dollar house, they're going to get way more at five hundred than they are at the four fifty mark anyway. So you may just be knocked out. But in terms of eyeballs on your house, I think that there are extremely valuable and things that need to be listened to in this article because I think that there, um, there was Bern Bernie slated it out it was very well done. Yes. I think there's a lot to think about. I Tons do not think, think it's a racket. I no. think anytime you're pricing property, being strategic, being thoughtful about the price makes a lot of sense to me. Absolutely, All absolutely, right? yep. All right, racket number two, will Compass suffer the same fate as WeWork? So if you're following any of this, let's just break it down. So I've been reading articles on WeWork. Um, They're owned by SoftBank Vision Fund, the same fund that is backing Compass, Open Door. Can, right? we, can you just water this down real quick for me, like shorthand? Like I just, I need some cliff notes on what WeWork is. So WeWork is the shared office space. Okay. Right? They're, the, they're, they're shared office space. And, um, I, you know, I don't know much more Wait, other than that. Is that one of their offices in that, in that picture? That, that, I think that's one of their offices in wow. that picture. Yep. So I'm it's like this hip, that. cool, shared yeah. office space. Okay. Now, WeWork reported 1.8 uh, billion. billion in revenue, but they lost 1.9. 1 1.9. 1 yes. So that's why they essentially pulled their uh, IPO filing. Okay, so that. they yep. filed for an IPO, mm -hmm. they pulled it. Mm -hmm. That's a bad sign for investors. Mm -hmm. When you say you're gonna do something and then you pull it because you don't have the revenue and you've, you've got a little bit of friction maybe at the top of the company, mm -hmm. that's not good right. for investors. Well, I think the CEO is claiming that um, he kind of got sideswiped a little, like he needed a little brain refreshing. But he regardless. got the sideswipage. Yeah, well, because people were accusing him that, well, anyway, we work is not the point here. We're talking about Compass, so. Yeah, and so. I do think we're comparing apples and oranges a little bit here, but. Well, I here's the thing that, that I would say, mm -hmm. right, is that they were funded by a ton of money. Right. Like Open Door, yes. like Compass. When you get free money, you spend it looser than when you are, uh, you know. Being held accountable. Being held accountable to your dollars that right. you're producing to, you know, just spending the money that you make because you want this fast exponential growth. What has Compass done? There's something that none of us can deny. Compass has gone out like, and I've said this before, like many brokerages do now and have done in the past. They've gone out and bought market share. They have went out there and given huge sign-in bonuses to agents to recruit them into mm -hmm. their offices mm -hmm. to gain market share strategically in certain cities. Mm -hmm. Now that works mm -hmm. when you are also able to recruit off of those recruits a number of people that are working at a favorable split to the brokerage. Because right. if you're bringing in this top talent and they're already getting a really good split for them and you're giving them the sinus, signing bonus money, they better be able to help you recruit off of the back end of that right. or you're gonna have a profitability problem. You're right. gonna have another- Which they you, do. You're gonna have a mm -hmm. profitability problem when the market takes uh, you know, a sh right? And you've got basically only the top agents producing because now they're on the top best splits. The other agents that were on your 50-50s or whatever they are, are getting wiped out because they're not doing business in a down market. Right. Right. Does that, that make sense, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's their biggest problem right now though too, is because they're spending their dollars on agents and um, they aren't profitable. So the concern here, obviously in this article is at what point does something have to change and what will need to change? Will it be agent splits will it be closing of offices what is it going to be in order to make compass just profitable? this pa past week compass lost their coo yep 
over to a, a job at Google. You, you don't take a new position at Google if you believe you have the next greatest real estate company of all freaking time. Uh, Suave, I've got to ask you to put this graph up. Brad Inman shared this and, and I shared it over to my uh, Instagram story. Mm -hmm. I've been saying and questioning Compass Agents, do you feel like you're a tech company? Please share with me examples outside of purchasing contextually that Compass is a tech company and that's, that's what they go with. We're a tech company first. Well, the graph that Brad showed shows you that 5% or less than of their employees are actually developers are in the tech category. 95% right. of their employees I believe when they, they're saying employees, they're not counting agents, and I hope right. they're not because that would right. really skew, skew the numbers. For sure. But 95% of their employees not being tech background, I would argue, doesn't make you a tech company. It makes you a brokerage. Right. Makes you Sotheby's 2.0. Right. Right. Hearing Dealing you. in the high end, yep. having an extremely slick logo. I mean, hell which, their which, sign. Which has oh. created some brand oh awareness well, for them. And, and it was that part was brilliant. I mean, I feel like I just want to. But but their Steal brand their better be something that, in my opinion, is sustainable. Sustainable in a way that highlights your agents as the superstars of the industry, because those are the brokerages that are, that are going to win. We're going to get into the marketeer of the week being Zillow. Uh, I believe. I believe with Zillow, it is over. I'll get into what that means next. But if you're not working directly for Zillow, which I imagine many people will be that hold a real estate license in, in five to 10 years, then you better be with a company that has a true brand behind a slick logo. I'm not saying, I haven't been behind the curtain at Compass or anything like that, and I'm not saying they don't have something sustainable, mm -hmm. but the writing on the wall today in 2019 looks a lot iffier than it did maybe 12 to 18 months when there was extreme buzz around Compass. Right. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Uh, I don't think the WeWork stuff's a racket at all. I think it's something to pay attention to. I think the fact that their CEO left around the same time is something to pay attention to. And if you just took a big spot, a big uh, offering over at Compass, I, I would really recommend you focusing on your brand first and not latching on too much to that Compass swag. There it is. All right, Marketeer of the Week happens to be Zillow. A little... You love it. Yep. Your nose is so brown. Listen, that, and that's why I, I did that, because people are going to say, oh, Byron, yes. you love sucking up to Zillow. What, what are you trying to put yourself in position to get Zo? Yeah, I am. I, I would love <laughs> Z. I would love Zio, but that's not where I'm going with this. I keep it real on the show. I'm going to give you my opinion, whether it's you know um, something you know really positive or maybe maybe where I'm a little down, like last racket with Compass. So last week I was in New York City, mm -hmm. Team Plus Retreat, which is a Tom Ferry. You basically had a room of a hundred people, the top teams in the organization, which we're part of. I uh, get to go to the, these retreats twice a year. Tom usually brings in somebody from Zillow to give us the state of the union for everything Zillow. This year he brought in Susan Damler. Susan was the, uh, she uh, sold Seat Guru to Expedia. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, then she sold Bifolio to Zillow, which then bought Street Easy. Mm -hmm. uh, she ran Street Easy for a number of years. She's now a SF like a SVP woman, huh? rather for yep. Zillow. She is a badass. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. And in her words, not mine, she said Zillow is in 2.0 phase. We are now entering Zillow 2.0 with their Flex launch. Mm -hmm. We're in the Flex program. We are, we, Flex are, program. we are one of four um, counties in the country in Flex, yeah. which is pretty cool. So we've, we've had hands-on. It is a little confusing, though, because there are some counties within our state that are not. So mm. it does get... The county that we pay for is in between the two counties that so it are gets, Flex. It gets very confusing. Yeah. Or, if, or if a buyer is coming from uh, looking in it it's very it's which a little is, confusing which is why if you're an agent you don't count the money you count the deals no 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 no. well but if you know but but if but because of follow-up with flex and like all the other rules all right like we're gonna we're not gonna anyway. talk about flex yes so zillow is in 2.0 phase which is and this is i wrote this stuff verbatim these are my notes right here okay 
We can do a screen share if people are interested. Your scribble that you want to show off your scribble? Uh, maybe not. All right. A united approach to getting buyers into the place they call home with agents at the heart of the transaction. Does mm. that give you a little... Mm -mm. That Just doesn't give you nothing? No. Doesn't give you a little warm and fuzzy? I mean, it sounds like they're saying what they're supposed to be saying. <laughs> Here, here's why they're the marketeer of the week. So despite whether you believe that to be the truth or not, right. here's why they're the marketeer of the week because there's not one real estate brokerage agent site portal that can say these two things. Yes. They get 180 million visitors a month to Zillow sites. So that includes Trulia and Street Easy and blah, blah, blah. Right. 180 million a month visitors. Mm -hmm. In the 19 cities that they have launched Zillow offers where they make people instant offers on their home, they get a request for a Zillow offer every 1.25 seconds. Amazing. Amazing. That right there is why I said last racket, it is over. I mean, that's less than half of the, like. Zillow owns crazy. it. They own the industry. When you think about 19 cities and that they are receiving requests for offers on people's homes every 1.25 seconds, they've won, guys. Did, like, did like she I, let you know how many of those they are actually then buying? Uh, less than 3%. Okay. So. So they're creating a ton of referrals for their agents and, right. and that would speak to their right. mission statement yep. that I read off. Yep. Okay. But I really want that to sink in. Who has Keller Williams, has Compass, has Sotheby's, has Coldwell Banker, has our company, William Ravis, has anybody's team out there, ha has Realogy, has BHHS, has anybody figured out how to create requests for offers on their home every 1.25 seconds automatically no the answer is no they've won well what's the amazing. game of awareness like people google shit and when people want to find a home they zillow it right well that's what that's what that's what's the most amazing thing because i feel like when we first started sort of talking about the rackets obviously zillow in our minds and in most minds was always a buyer's lead right you're like getting buyer leads but over i mean how long have we been doing this 90 episodes i mean again we're not always really great about doing it every week but we're talking about almost two years over the course of the two years they have been successful clearly and now turning into a listing referral and listing leads as I mean two years I mean L let's just be clear they're holding a broker's license in the states that they have to it, you know in a sense of like being able to accept referral fees right. so they're holding broker license in those states so every state that makes them hold a broker license to accept these referral fees for like flex yep. they are going to do that here's what else they said or, or, or Susan said Zillow's North Star is that everybody should buy and sell using Zillow. This 2.0 version is Zillow saying, hey, if you just listen to what we're telling you, we are the brokerage. Right. Well, they are. We're they the are. broker. They are a broker. You're going to pay us the referral fee, yeah. which automatically puts you at 70% split, and then you can split with who you think is your broker. Right who doesn't generate any leads for you, right. who can't generate offers uh, on homes in 1.25 or doesn't get requests for offers every 1.25 seconds, the game's over. So when I say a company like in the last uh, racket that of Compass really needs to have a brand that absolutely connects with the consumer if they're going to make it when they're borrowing as much money as they are or getting investments from a company like SoftBank that they are, it's because you got to compete with this. Right. You can do it at the local level. If you're a powerful team and you want to connect with your local community, you can get in front of Zillow. Now, Zillow is going to see that and they're going to partner with you and send you all the other leads that you're not able to generate. But that's the only shot you got. Hmm. People are going to call you a downer. I'm, I'm, listen, the reason I'm getting so like amped up and antsy about it is because I want everybody that holds a real estate license wherever you are to actually listen to this, to build a brand and to work with Zillow and stop doing what we've done the last right. 10, like 15 trying to stop years. Zillow, revolt Zillow, oh, this is this, Zillow. is this yeah. is stupid. This is never going to happen. Look at the stock is dropping. Yeah, it means you should buy some. <laughs> it means you should wake up and buy some of it to think that you're ever as a especially as an individual agent 
especially as an individual agent, to think you're going to compete with somebody who's generating requests for offers every 1.25 seconds yeah. in 19 cities, wait until they do this in 50 states. Right. No, they're not even in 50 states. It's coming. It is coming, and it's coming quicker than you think. And the consumers will adapt to this quicker than you think. I don't, oh, my demographic's 65 and up. Okay? Wait five years when your demo's 55. Right. And they're all using it. Yeah. Or, well, or their kids are now having to sell that 65 and over home. Exactly. Yeah. So, interesting. Marketeer of the week goes to Zillow. I wish it didn't. I wish it could go to, oh, what? listen to this. Tom Ferry's going to do uh -oh. a, a fairy festival. He's doing like a Sundance I'm sorry? for video. A fairy film festival, fairy. not a fairy festival. I just, I love, I feel like the first time I met Tom, um, I feel like we talked about something fairy, and of course it immediately went to like tooth fairy, because when I think fairy, I think like wings, yeah. and, and then we got into a whole thing about being a tooth fairy. And so he's going to do a fairy film festival. Yes. And we'll have to do a marketeer like a couple of weeks on that. He's going to have different categories. It's going to be a whole event. Where, where, where what is this? Like what's? It's coming in the future. Ugh. In the future. California. Yeah. You gonna go? Sure. You gonna stay in Connecticut, work on your tan year? No, I'd love to go. I just I need more details. More, oh shit! I need more details. Dates and details. All yeah, right. something. Come on, Barry. Maybe Nicole will be there. Hmm. Maybe not. All no. right, guys. I'd love your opinion on all three. I think really good topics this week. Yeah, good for job. Sure. Nicole. Yeah, they made you sweat a little. You got. Am I sweating? Yeah, you got a little. You're you're you're, oh, you're doing it. A little it. on the um. Yeah, you did on it on the upper lip. Yep. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate everybody following this show. Mm -hmm. Um. Would love some comments, love some feedback. Please, sure. Right? Yeah. So let us know what you're thinking. Any any marketeers you see out there, so we don't have to name companies like Zillow. Zillow. Although I have massive respect for Zillow. Send me your ZO. We're ready. We're willing. <laughs> we're ready to do that. All right, guys. Thank oh, you Lord. so much. Keep it real. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.